If you feel like you're trying hard on your tennis forehand, but just can't hit a powerful shot, then you've clicked on exactly the right video. That's what my recent student told me was happening to her, but when I took my first look at her contact position, it totally didn't make any sense. If you study tennis swing technique and mechanics, then you know that this is a really bad position. And for context, this is a 3.5 level player, and she came in telling me, Ian, my forehand is so weak, it's my weakest shot, what do I do? And so when I looked at this, I was like, what in the world is happening? Let me show you some context so that you know what I mean. Here's a 3.5 level player. This is what I normally see at the point of contact from most of my students. Look at where this student's hips are facing, where her shoulders are facing. This is normal. And if you are around the 3.5 level in terms of tennis, this is probably what you look like around the point of contact. Whether you know you're supposed to be doing this or not, doesn't matter. There's habits that are why you're a 3-5 player, and this is what's most common around that level in terms of the level of activation and the timing of when the body starts to turn. Here's another recent student. This is a 4-5 level player, and I want you to watch the difference in what the contact position looks like. The body here is leading, it's going first, and the racket is lagging behind, and so at contact, his body position is totally different. His shoulders and chest are facing forwards. His hips have pivoted and turned to face forwards all by the time the ball touches the racket. Now, here's a professional level player. Here's Caroline Wozniacki. On this one, we'll get how her body is leading and turning first. And so by the time she meets the ball, her shoulders are facing forwards and her hips are facing forwards as the ball touches the racket. And now here's Victoria Azarenka, and she's gonna leave the court and actually is moving slightly backwards, but her hips and shoulders are still leading the swing. And by the time the ball touches the racket, her shoulders are facing forwards and her hips are facing forwards. So now with, with those examples and that context in mind, you understand how why when I see this forehand and I hear what she's saying about her forehand being her weakest shot, and I look at her shoulders, and I look at her hips, at the point of contact, I'm just thinking, what in the world is, go how is that possible? You can't defy the laws of nature and like energy transfer and biomechanics and stuff like that. So something else is happening here. This is why this forehand is so kind of crazy and different and unique. Let's go back and now do a little bit of detective work and go back a little bit earlier in the swing. And I'll show you some full motion swings here in a second as well. If we go back a little bit, watch what happens. And remember the four or five player we looked at, what well, we saw were the big parts of the body leading the way and the arm and the racket lagging behind really passively. Watch the difference here with this player. And specifically, I want you to keep your eye on her right elbow and watch how that right elbow actually initiates and it leads. So instead of her shoulders initiating or her hips initiating, it's her elbow pushing forwards is the first actor, the first force that's pushing the racket forwards. Any type of big tennis movement, a serve, a forehand, a backhand, where we're looking to generate a lot of racket head speed and as much energy with as little effort as possible, what we want to do is pull the racket through using the body to lead the parade, to lead the charge forwards and keep the arm and the hand really passive and relaxed. When the arm and the hand take over and go first, I like to call that a push. Whereas when you look at high level players, professional players, they are pulling with their body first. So this player is initiating with a push, which is not unusual. Three, five players, that's normal. But what's, what is unusual is this player then, after leading with the elbow and the hand, her body actually is working to catch up and actually arrives in the right position by the time she makes contact, which is pretty wild. But the damage has already been done. When the elbow jumps out to this early lead, it's already initiated a weak kinetic chain. It's broken the kinetic chain. And when the small parts of the body take over and take the lead, the big parts of the body can try to catch up, but they've already lost the race. So here's her in full motion, making this push swing. If you're a very experienced coach and you've studied a lot of biomechanics and kinetic chain and like how the body is supposed to work, 
you can you can get kind of a glimpse of it happening, but it's so hard to catch for sure what's happening in that quick quarter of a second or half of a second without slowing it down and using video. So here's the first drill I took her through to start using a pull instead of a push. What I'm doing here, I've used this a lot in the past with a lot of success, but I'm pulling, I'm holding onto her racket gently and waiting for her to give me a little bit of pull or resistance using her shoulders and her hips. Now, in real life, this is exaggerated. This is just to get her to feel what it would be like to initiate with her body and feel a little bit of a stretch kind of coming from her shoulder, maybe a little bit from uh, her oblique. And then I'll let the racket go when I feel a little bit of a pull and then she goes through the rest of her motion. So after doing a couple of those and letting her feel that, I let her go ahead and start to swing without the stretch, like without me manually kind of making her do it. So here's a couple of those swings where I'm asking her to basically recreate that same feeling of that stretch taking place, but now without me manually kind of enabling it and see if she can lead with her body correctly. And now you can see like there's a huge difference here in these swings because now the big parts of her body are leading and pulling her arm and her racket behind her. And so there isn't any catching up that her body has to do because it's truly leading the way the whole time, just like it was for those professional players that we looked at a second ago. The third drill we did together was I had her layer together some shadow swings, which you're seeing right here with no ball, and then some really easy underhand tosses where my the whole focus or point was for her to practice pulling with her body and leading with her body. And already you're starting to see some really nice smooth swings here with her body actually leading the way. Instead of her elbow jumping way out in the lead, now her body is starting to actually lead the way and her arm is coming behind. And she's starting to hit shots that are much easier feeling for her now than when she started. The fourth drill we did was simply repeat that same sequence from back in No Man's Land. And this adds a little bit of extra challenge. The timing's a little bit more difficult. There's a little bit more time and it feels a little bit more like real life. And I'm just encouraging her to really focus in on continuing to pull with her body and keep her arm as passive as possible. And we're checking in with video, by the way, making sure she's on the right track and not sliding back into her old habit. And what we're looking for is her body to keep leading and her arm to keep following as passively as possible. Before I show you her baseline swings, I want you to look at her original forehand swing again and watch for that elbow. And now that you can, you're kind of attuned and know what we're looking for, look at how her arm is cutting in line and jumping out ahead of her body. You see it? And now I want you to compare those to these, which she did like 45 minutes later, and watch the difference in smoothness and the difference in fluidity and she was hitting these balls. You can see her kind of commenting and smiling here. She was hitting these balls with as much force and power as she was before, but with dramatically less efforts, dramatically more efficiency. It's because now her body is moving in the right order and her arm isn't having to work so hard. This is how all high level players hit their forehands. This is how the best players at your local courts are able to look like they're trying so little but hit the ball so hard. And if you follow these same drills, I'm really confident you can start to move in that same direction. Thanks for watching. I hope this was a really big help. Keep up the good work on your game back at home.